Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Particle Fleet Emergence. Very excited to start a new game in the Creeper World Saga. We, of course, spent a long, long time in Creeper World 3, especially in the Alpha Sector. But now it is time to move on. Particle Fleet is, of course, the fourth game in the Creeper World series. I have already done LPs of the first three, Creeper World 1, 2, and 3, and those links will be in the description below if anyone is interested in taking a look at that. The brainchild of Virgil Wall of Knuckle Cracker Games. All this down here. And Creeper World 4, the fifth game in the series, is currently in development quite a while before that'll be with us, though. So, definitely excited to get to the most recently released game in the series. In general, Creeper World games are sort of an, a strange concoction, if you will, of real-time strategy, tower defense. They tend to be sort of a fairly chill experience, but a lot of fun and, and oddly enjoyable and addictive. You know, it's one of those things that is more fun than it appears at first blush that it should be. Of course, as is my tradition, it will be blind, no pause, play as always. It's not totally blind. I have seen the first uh, couple bits of it just to get everything set up. Of course, there's the technical side and also make sure I have some vague clue what I'm getting into so I know how I wanted to present it. Starting first with our main uh, element here right in the beginning. We have the story here and the little blurb about it. Tycon Corporation is apparently the protagonist. We shall see. And so we go in here and we'll enter the story mode. We'll get to that in a bit. Inception. First five missions to unlock. and we Or we can just unlock it anyway. Not going to do that. Simulacrum. Simulacrum. So five missions again to unlock that. The Exchange. We have to do ten story missions to unlock that. There's a mission editor, 10. Ship editor, we could enter at any time. We'll get to that at another point, and I'll explain why. And then we're back around to the story. So those are the elements. So I'm thinking Inception is an additional story bit. That these are, like, procedurally generated missions, like we've seen in the past. And that the exchange is where you download other custom missions from other people. But that's just a guess. I haven't actually been through into any of those. Okay, so we've got Corporation in the game. That's one of the DLC elements that I do have, but I don't frankly think it's that interesting. You can put an icon and a string, like you can see there's various ones that people have come up with. Some are extremely basic and some of them are just, you know, they've done their designs and whatnot. So I'm just gonna stick with the default experience. And then we've got our stats and achievements page. We can see how far we've gotten on these various things. Nothing here. It's completing these first little bits of achievements from my testing out of the game. We can load missions if we've saved them. And then we have the settings here. And I've upped, I don't even know what the UI lean even does, but the, because I've tried messing around with it, it doesn't seem to affect much of anything that I can tell. We're going to leave all the effects options on the defaults. And then the UI scale just, you know, goes up and down. And I'm putting it one segment above because I think it works better, particularly for video presentation, to have things bigger and more clear. If I put it any higher, then stuff starts tripping over each other. So we're going to... Words and windows get printed on top of each other, and I don't think that's going to be a great idea. And then, of course, we've got our typical sound. You've got the various key bindings, as you have in any quality game. And the advanced stuff in here, we're not even going to be messing with that. Force unlock everything, mute the music. And I have the music on here because it doesn't appear to be triggering any sort of copyright warning. So, as long as that continues to be the case, then we're going to stick with it. So, for today, we are not going to be actually playing any at all. We're just going to be going through the prologue, which is the first element in the story, if we pop in here. Okay, so it's just it's just a view, and then we have the launch on uh, Naivety, but in order to get to any of the other missions, we have to unlock them. 
they've done the different games different ways. Like, you could see what all the missions were for Creeper World 2, but for Creeper World 1 you couldn't, for Creeper World 3 you couldn't. And this is another one where you can. You can go around Indelible, Unwise, etc. You can go all the way through around these. And then we've got something, some sort of codex here. And so we know that there are 16 missions and then an epilogue. So that's where we're headed. And the prologue is where we're going next. And I'm going to reset the volume back up to normal. And then I'm just going to be silent for all of this prologue part. Because I think that when you're doing a cinematic or whatever, you should sort of let the game speak for itself. And then when it's done, I will have a few things to say about that. Okay, now we're not going to continue this time, obviously. It would just take us right back out to the story menu, but a lot to unpack there. You've got the quote at the beginning. Give a man a mask and he will show you his true face. That's from Oscar Wilde. And the idea of it is that if you give somebody anonymity, they'll be free to act like themselves. If, you know, when people don't have to hide for reasons of social acceptance behind whatever sort of mask they put up, then they'll reveal themselves, and that can be both good or bad, as we have certainly seen in the Internet age. And then you've got CEO Vero of Hale Corporation, and apparently he's a hero sacrificing not only himself but his entire corporate fleet to give us the information, whatever is in that info cache. We have the particulate threat, so we have those red particles that are the enemy, apparently, that we're fighting. We have redacted space. 
what in the world is redacted space? And we've got this ArcBot thing here, which looks suspiciously like the Silent Observer, sort of like a Platius type of character, perhaps, from the earlier games. You've got Vero referencing Vero Hale, of course, from Creeper World 2 Heroism. So, and then the whole reference here, of course, to the Arc Eternal plot of the third game. So th there's a bunch of throwbacks, and it's very recognizable as Creeper World mechanics. You've got particles instead of a viscous liquid type of thing going on, but it looked like we had emitter type things there. We had things blowing up and the shock wave pushing the particles back. It looked like there was an emitter moving across, which had a sort of a shape to the particles that were around it. And I don't understand all the mechanics there, but clearly there is a situation here where we've got just why we need to go into redacted space, why we can't just leave it alone. Um, you know, what was worth sacrificing that whole fleet for that's in this info cache. All of that very much a mystery. So we'll be delving more into all of those things next time, but I really like sort of the music and the atmosphere here. So if possible, I'm going to try to keep the music going at a moderate level as we proceed through the story. So next time we will return with the first actual mission of the campaign in naivety. But until then, thanks for watching, everybody. More Particle Fleet will continue. I hope you're going to stick around for the ride as we enjoy this fourth game in the Creeper World series.